So today I'd like to talk to you about uh, STORM. Uh, STORM stands for Scalable Transactions Over Remote Memory. And that was the first title that we came up with. But then we changed the title and we kept the name. So in case it's confusing. Uh, so this is joint work with uh, my colleagues from Purdue, Ijo, and Ying. Um, then we have Ashish from Penn State, Michael and Michael and Marcus from Technia, uh, from VMware. We have Hagai Boris and Liran from uh, Malamux, and then we have Ben from uh, from Technium. Now, because we have uh, Malamux authors, so this paper must have to do with uh, something have to do with uh, RDMA. And yes, so this is a, this is an RDMA paper. Um, let's first cover the basics. So, what is RDMA? Um, RDMA is a technology or a mechanism allowing processes within a data center to access directly access each other's memory across the network. And the way it works is that a, a process initiates a transfer, the network hardware executes that transfer, and then the process falls for asynchronously falls for completions. <coughs> and Infinivent is the most commonly used uh, network stack that uh, enables RDMA. And this is a picture of a Malamux um, network adapter that implements Infinivent. Of course, there are cheaper alternatives to full-blown Infinivents. We could take the Finnevent transfer and just layer it on top of IP and losses Ethernet. That's what uh, we refer to as Rocky. Right? So what are the key benefits of RDMA? There are two big benefits. One is uh, the fact that we can access remote memory one-sidedly, right? meaning that only the initiator CPUs, CPU is involved. And secondly, <coughs> we can do it from user space uh, with minimal instruction footprint. Um, and that's because uh, Infiniband, again, is fully offloaded onto the network adapter. So one specific use case that has attracted a lot of attention from the systems community uh, is implementing remote data structures over RDMA. Think of any classical data structure, like hash table, graph, tree, queue. <coughs> How would you do it uh, over RDMA? And the reason why it's so interesting is because we need a couple of things. We need five gain access. We need a hyphen out in case uh, we want to, if in case our data structure spans multiple or many servers. Uh, data structures typically pointer linked, so we might have to chase pointers. We need transactional access uh, to our data structure. We need high throughput, and we, we need a, a good latency SLO. So a lot of things. Um, there are also other, uh, perhaps less interesting use cases. Uh, for example, doing analytics or doing VM, VM migration. And there, we're essentially doing a, uh, transferring a larger amount of data from point A to point B. And as long as we have enough memory bandwidth, we're going to be running at the maximum network speed, and that's basically it. But getting a data structure of RDMA uh, right, that's uh, a, a lot more difficult to do. And what have been the biggest concern, concerns with this? So one big concern is scalability. Right? Um, Infiniment is a stateful protocol. And as I said, it's fully offloaded onto the network adapter. So what this means <coughs> is that all the state that's associated with Infiniment um, has also has to reside on, uh, on the network itself. And in this picture, I'm showing um, a, a network adapter with a small cache. And then we have the state, which includes things like address stations, uh, protection, <coughs> a base and bounds for the various buffers that we register with the <coughs> controller. We have connections. And then we have Q pairs. So all of that has to be kept on the cache so that we get um, maximum benefit. The second uh, big concern is round trips. So if we have a point of link data structure, we may have to do multiple round trips to be able to traverse the data structure. So what is that people have proposed to solve uh, these two big issues? So we have a farm from Microsoft Research uh, uh, which proposes using uh, sharing connections, Q pair connections across multiple threads. We have uh, the other camp from Carnegie Mellon uh, that argues that we shouldn't use connections, but we should be uh, using an unreliable datagram transport. And then we have Light uh, from Purdue that argues that we should enforce protection in the OS kernel as opposed to the network adapter. And that way, we can get rid of the protection state. And the second, the way people tackle the second problem is um, in Farm, for instance, we use uh, the hopscotch algorithm where you can essentially inline multiple items within, a, within the same bucket or uh, within a, a neighborhood of buckets, right? And then what happens is that we do one round trip in the common case, and we do the search uh, on the initiator side. And then the, in ERPC, we just use RPCs, 
And then the owner of the data essentially can traverse uh, the data structure for us. So uh, this is the outline of the talk. So I covered the uh, problem statement. Um, then next, we're going to talk about some key insights of this work. Then I'm going to talk about the design of STORM. And then finally, we'll uh, cover some, some results. So what are the key insights? Well, the first big insight is that the hardware has gotten much better. And rather than showing you a graph with a bunch of curves, uh, I decided to give you a few interesting data points. Um, and here, we're essentially comparing um, a, the, a more recent uh, generation of, of uh, uh, RDMA network adapters to Mellanox, ConnectX4, uh, or 5, compared to that to ConnectX3. So first data point is that we can do, uh, we can get a, a much higher IOPS, um, let's say 4x higher IOPS. We can scale up to 64 machines, whereas if you use ConnectX3, the, your throughput will collapse uh, even for like less than 10 machines. Um, then another interesting data point is that with ConnectX4, we achieve 10 million IOPS when we have zero cache hit on the network adapter, meaning that all the accesses to the state go to main memory. Right? And that is actually what we get on a ConnectX3, which is uncontended, so in, in the case where we always hit the cache. Right? And a final data point is that the break-even point in terms of throughput with doing send-receive over uh, datagrams is currently at 4,000 connections. And this is expected to, to improve in the future. Look at ConnectX6 and ConnectX7, uh, this will change. Now, how is, uh, how is hardware getting better? Well, there are a couple of things. We have more concurrency. We can hi essentially hide the latency of accessing the state in main memory. We have free fetching. We have somewhat larger caches, and probably uh, a few other things that I'm personally not aware of because I don't work for Mellanox. But Haga is in the room, so um, you should definitely ask. Now, the second set of insights has to do with um, software frameworks. So, if you look at Farm, we, if we share connections using blocks, this will degrade throughput, and that's also what the authors report in their paper. Um, second issue is that if our key-value pairs are larger than what uh, is, initial, is initially assume, assumed, we'll end up with, with much larger buckets, and this will waste a lot of throughput, because we're transferring the, the entire bucket or a neighborhood of buckets, and then we're doing the, look, the lookup uh, at the source node. Now, uh, for eRPC and FAST, we, we're doing RPC, so it's two-sided communication, and two-sided doesn't allow for maximum full duplex throughput that we can get with one-sided reads or one-sided writes. And this is especially true for requests larger than a cache line. If your request is, is smaller than a cache line, then we can do some tricks uh, such as inlining to get higher than usual throughput, but not as high as what we can get with one-sided reads and writes. And finally, um, <laughs> Because uh, we, we use unreliable, they use unreliable datagrams, we have to onload onto the CPU congestion control and retransmissions, and which adds overhead. And then finally, Light uh, argues that uh, basically, as I mentioned, that we want to do um, protection in, in, the, in the OS kernel, and that obviously add, adds overhead, especially for fine grained accesses. And also, in the, in the first version of flight, there was no support for asynchronous reads, writes, and sends and receives. So what's our approach? So here I list a few um, the design principles uh, for Storm. So the first design principles is that we should go back to connections. We should still try to minimize the, uh, the, sort of the number of connections that we use. Um, if we really have to share connections, then we should use a lock-free mechanism for that. <coughs> and, and, uh, one big benefit of using connections is we get, we get offloaded congestion control, um, which essentially reduces overheads. Second, now that we have connections, we can take advantage of one-sided reads whenever we can. And in this paper, we propose using what we call one two-sided uh, primitives, where we first do a, a, a remote read, and then if we fail, then we um, sort of uh, resort to doing, uh, doing RPCs. And also in Storm, RPC is also implemented using one-sided writes, of course, in a scalable manner. Three, we should leverage abundant memory. Uh, for instance, we should be able to cache data structure-specific metadata so that we get one round trip in the comma case. And also, we can uh, do things like uh, to essentially oversubscribe memory to reduce collisions in hash tables specifically. Um, and this turns out to be uh, very effective. 
And four, even though we have, uh, we have a sort of better hardware, we, sh we should still try to minimize translation and protection state. And our approach is to use contiguous physical allocation. So contiguous is for getting rid of the protection state so they have fewer registered buffers. And then physical is for getting rid of the translations. Right? And finally, don't forget to deploy on new hardware. So if you're doing research in RDMA or if you're using RDMA in data centers, you should definitely buy the most recent hardware from Mellanox or any other company that uh, manufactures um, this kind of hardware. And this is the design of Storm. So we have um, the data plane that doesn't really understand the internals of any specific data structure. It only understands connections, pair connections, and essentially uh, memory bytes. And then uh, we have the data structure implement on the side, and that data structure could also, uh, we can also implement caching in that data structure to cache data structure specific metadata. So what happens when uh, the user issues a request for a specific you know, item? So we're gonna query the data structure, we're gonna check if we know the address or if we guess the address, and if we don't, then we resort to RPC, we do an RPC, the owner will do the lookup for us and will respond, and then at the end we'll check that the data that we have uh, read is actually what we, we wanted to, uh, to have. Now, the better thing to do is to basically do a lookup locally, and if this succeeds, then we do a one-sided read. In that case, the CPU of the owner is not involved in this transaction. And then finally, once we finish, we have to make sure that the data is correct. Now, it could also be the case that we check and we made a guess, but that guess was not uh, uh, correct. So we'll, we'll do a check at the end, and then we'll see that we failed. And in that case, we move on, we switch, we fail over to RPCs, we do an RPC, and then we check um, that the data that we have uh, collected is what, what we were looking for. Uh, there's also support for transactions. Um, we could uh, run transactions. Uh, the, 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 we get serializable transaction in this specific case. Uh, we do not have multi-versioning. Um, all right, so how is this achieved? If you remember, I talked about the data plane talking to the data structure. So this is done through uh, an interface of, that consists of three callbacks. So the first callback is the RPC handler that handles all two-sided communication. And you can do complex things such as acquiring blocks, uh, uh, executing uh, the, uh, the commit phase, etc. Then we have two more callbacks where we, uh, at the beginning, we have to do a lookup to check if we know the address that we would like to read from. And then at the end, we have the, the final sort of this callback to check if the data is uh, correct. So Storm is implemented in 30,000 lines of C++ without including um, MICA modifications. So MICA is an open source um, uh, hash table that we used in this project. And deployed Storm on an HPC cluster with 32 Dell machines with high speed infinite network, 100 gigabits per second. We have Malamax Connect X4, which, as I mentioned, is similar to Connect X5. And we're able to emulate 3 to 4x larger clusters uh, using uh, 32 machines. And then, in terms of benchmarks, we used uh, the, all the typical benchmarks that uh, people use for this kind of work. So we have key value. The key value micro benchmark, we can run transactions in a set of objects. And then we have KTP, uh, which is used for more complex transactions. And then finally, to cover some of the results. So first, um, we compared to Farm, ERPC, and Lite. So Farm, we emulate using Storm. And we um, make one modifications. We do not use blocks to share connections, because it's not, it wouldn't be fair to use connections on uh, more recent hardware. ERPC we test with and without active congestion control, just to emphasize the overheads of doing congestion control in software. And then uh, in light, we modified light to do asynchronous, to allow for asynchronous reads and bytes. Um, all right, so first set of results, we're doing a single lookup. This is a single lookup workload. We have 128 byte key value pairs, 100 million items, 20 threads per machine. And here we're showing the throughput as a function of the number of machines. So we go from 4 to 32. And you see that, and, and in this specific case, we're caching uh, data structure specific uh, metadata. And this allows us to get a constant of four, 40 million uh, operations per second. All right, so, and if you remember at the beginning, I said that if you use ConnectX3, the throughput collapses for, let's say, less than 10 nodes. So the, in this case, it's way better. 
Um, now, we could use the memory that we use for caching to just oversubscribe uh, the memory for the hash table and then get fewer collisions. In that case, we get somewhat lower throughput, but it's still pretty good. And the reason why it's lower is because now we actually have to do one-to-side operations. So if we have a collision, we have to uh, resort to RPCs. The reason why the throughput goes up and down is because the number of collisions varies as we scale from 4 to 32. OK, now if we zoom in uh, for, uh, for the first 16 nodes and we compare storm oversubscribe to ERPC uh, farm and light, you can see that storm is by far the best. A uh, few um, sort of uh, in interesting insights is that the overhead of congestion control is around 20%, which is what the authors report in their NSDI paper. We have farm, which uh, where we get around 10 million. And the issue here is that if you remember at the beginning, I said that uh, if you have larger key value pairs, you'll end up with larger buckets, and then you'll waste a lot of throughput. And that's exactly what's happening here. And then for light, we managed to improve the throughput um, significantly, but it's still not there, simply because of the complexities. Uh, there is lots of synchronization going on in the last kernel. OK, and then in terms of TATP, I invite you to look at the paper for more detailed results. But we get 11.8 uh, 8 million um, uh, transactions per node um, at 30, for 32 uh, servers. Does Storm scale well? Well, it can scale up to 64 machines. If you go beyond 64 machines, the throughput will drop, but it's, you'll still get a significant throughput. Um, now, if you are OK with using the number of threads by 2x, if you use 10 threads per machine, you, you, can, see that you, you can see that you can go beyond 64 machines. So you can go up to 128, and it will be fine. Um, if you really need more than 10 threads, then you should think about block-free user sharing. All right, and just to conclude, um, so in this paper, we argue that people should get um, hardware upgrade. Right? You should buy uh, the most recent hardware from uh, an RDMA vendor. And because more scalable hardware is available, and we should take advantage of connections and doing one -sided, using one-sided primitives. Um, also, we think that we should uh, leverage abundant memory to use caching or subscription so that we can enforce one-sided reads in the common case. And finally, a few uh, ongoing research threads that we're working on. So we had, uh, uh, th there was a paper at HotOS where we explored how to design farm memory data structures. You probably wonder, OK, we, showed it. we have the hash table. What about other data structures? So this paper covers that. Um, we're also thinking about a memory allocator that will allow us to repurpose unused memory that we use uh, when oversubscribing. Um, and then also a lot of free mechanisms for Qubit sharing. This is another research thread. And um, how much do I have? Two minutes, right? So I have uh, maybe just one more slide to cover. So this is um, a, a more radical, sort of more intrusive approach to solving this issue. Right? Uh, Oracle Sonoma is a sort of a proposal from Oracle Hot Chips 2015, where what you can do, you can fold the network controller into the CPU, into the caches, cache hierarchy, and that will allow you to scale with the number of Q pairs to scale the throughput much better. Right? Here you hit the capacity limit. Right? So this is, if you remember, for ConnectX, ConnectX five, uh, 4 and 5, the capacity peak is around 10 million. Uh, uh, request per second. And this is a PCIe-based NIC, right, where the throughput collapses, probably a connectx 3 where the throughput collapses from, you know, much smaller number of pairs. So this is a more intrusive approach, uh, and I, I think it's uh, it's very effective. So uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you. What was, uh, what was the type of connection you used? Was it RC? Yeah, it was RC, yeah. And uh, uh, have you shared QPs across the or not? No, we did not share Q QPs. If you think about, um, so here, there's no sharing, no locks. <coughs> here, you're just using 20 threads, and you can see the throughput going down because you know, there are too many clips. And uh, if, uh, when you're talking about threads yeah. uh, and, uh, and the clustering, uh, and the what? And, uh, and the cluster of uh, nodes. Okay. So each given thread from uh, from one node had to communicate with all other threads, or just no. with one for destination. So that's one trick that you can use to reduce the number of connections, and that's what other groups have also used, which is to only communicate with the sibling thread, right? 
if you have a thread with ID zero, that thread will talk to another thread with the same ID on all the other nodes. So you don't do all to all. So that's one way to sort of reduce the number of pairs. If you want to go further than that, then you need sharing. <coughs> so that's something that we have, didn't use. And we, we're exploring uh, what we give the sharing. So. Okay. So maybe, maybe, maybe you should take it off. Yeah, maybe you can continue off. This is a weird fun. So we'll keep uh, the next uh, talk. Uh, take a second.